I thought coming in they were elite defensively, and I thought that they're you know they score the ball in five seconds more than any other team in the country. I could show you 50 clips where they scored before 25 seconds on the shot, and I thought we did a hell of a job of taking that away. Um, I and I think we really we scored against them. You know, I I really didn't know that we'd be able to get to 80 against them. I told many people that we couldn't. Uh, but what really hurt us was the rebounding in the first half. And it made us make some adjustments that allowed some threes in the second half. I mean, we, we give up 27% from the three, and that's just where they were at halftime. But they were getting the misses and laying them in, and so we had to make some adjustments. And give them credit, they made threes. And uh, they're a really good basketball team, but so are we. It was, I thought it was a hell of a college basketball game. Great atmosphere. What did they end up saying there, 18,000? 16,000. Yeah. So, how can you beat that? Huh? How can you beat that? College basketball in Detroit, I think two really good programs. Uh, I'm prejudiced when I say that about ours. I guess you can determine that yourself, but um, I'm really pleased. and I've got a really good team. Disappointed that we weren't able to win the game. I really thought we could. Yeah. I really thought we could. I thought we were going to win tonight. And... Uh, it's very disappointed that we didn't, but I think we learned a lot from it. And maybe we'll get this, you know, maybe we can get ourselves in the NSA tournament and get another Power Five win this year. The text on the goaltending call that wasn't, um, it was a really tight game, and that turned out to be a pretty big swing. Just looking back. Well, that's what I said to him. Your coach screwed you there, you know, but uh, it was goaltending. In, in, a, in a game like this, you can't miss that. I understand it was a tough call, but I didn't think it was. And uh, I wasn't happy. And did it did it swing the game? Maybe, you know, maybe it did. And if it did, then you know I I feel really bad about it. But if it happened again tomorrow, I'd do the same damn thing. You know, that's my job. I don't think I should have gotten a technical. But I get, I, don't, I guarantee you Tom doesn't think he should have got one either. So, and there are times I know I deserve one. And there are times I want one. That was not one of the times. But it was, it, I, you know, I, I'm not, I, the game was well officiated. I'm not, you know, we all make mistakes. We all miss a call. They missed a call. No big deal. They, they were, that's a tough game to officiate. Those three guys are really good officials. All three of them, and they did a good job, but they missed that call at a critical time, and Jack. so I'm going to react. Jack and then John. Greg, uh, Tom used nine players in the first four minutes, and it was 27 nothing at bench points. How important is depth in a game like that with a 168 point score? For us, not that important because the, there were only. There were 30 possessions at halftime and probably 35 in the second half. There were only 65, I think, possessions in the game. I, I could be off one or two. So for us, my big four are going to play. If the game has more possessions in the 70s or 80s, then they're gonna, um, my bench is going to play more. Now, Blake Lampman and Zion Young are supposed to score points for us. They're our shooters, and they didn't make shots tonight. Sometimes they don't, and that's why we didn't score. But I can show you... You know, Blake Lyman scored 18 against Toledo. I mean, our bench will normally score. It was a weird, a weird night. That's all. And Tom, that's how he plays his team. He rotates guys. I mean, that's probably the most minutes Bingham's played all year. Um, but he was such a dominant figure in this game. Yeah, you know. So I don't look at that. You know, I don't look at that at all. Um, if you're 18 to 22 years old and you've got a, and you've got a media timeout for two and a half minutes every four minutes and you can't play 40 minutes, something, you know, I've done a terrible job of getting you in shape, right? Especially at that slow pace. I mean, that was a slow pace. That's probably the slowest pace game Michigan State's played all year. We tried to make it slow. We did everything we needed. We, the thing that killed us was the offensive rebounding. We had to come in in the second half, which allowed them to make some threes, and they made them. But I had to make a choice. I had to make a choice, and I... I did not want to give up offensive rebounds, so we we made a difference and and or made a change, and it changed our defense a little bit. 
and now they got some penetration because of it. And, and But everything else we wanted to do, we did. We got good shots. I was fearful going into the game we couldn't even get a look because that's how good I think they were defensively and watching and preparing for the game. We score. We, go to, we make more free throws than our opponents shoot. And remember this. We've played 11 times. We've only played once at home. So when you look at our defensive numbers, and, and I read an article somebody wrote yesterday or today that our numbers aren't are really good but not great. Well, they're, they're really good. Yeah, but look who we've played and where we've played. We've played one home game. And your, your percentages are built on uh, your, your, you know, your defensive field goal percentage best in the country that are built playing at home a lot. That's what all the big-time teams do. And playing bad teams. We haven't played at home or bad teams. So I'm ecstatic about our numbers. I think our numbers defensively are off the charts if you look at who we've played. The key number for us is the free throws. That zone, we play aggressive and don't foul. That is a, a non-negotiable part of our defense. Do not foul. Michigan State shot eight free throws. We were 18 and 23. We made 10 more than they shot. We're supposed to win those games. Right? The biggest thing that I'll give Michigan State credit for is we were turning teams over 16 times a game. Now remember who we've played. 16 times a game. They had 10. And they came in throwing it all over the place. Every one of you that has written anything critical about that team has talked about their their turnovers and how they just throw the ball around. Well, he had a week and a half to get ready, and they didn't. I felt we could win the game because I felt we could turn them over 20 times, and I felt we could get to the line. We didn't turn them over. John? Yeah, Greg, I'm just wondering how you feel how Jamal can build on this performance as you head into the next stretch of, stretch of games. Jamal is a pro. Jamal's going to get drafted. If he doesn't, uh, I've got... 15 texts I could show you from NBA scouts, general managers, and that that said, Camp, you were right on Kendrick Nunn. Man, are you right? And I've written every one of them and said, well, if I was right on him, I got the next one I'm going to be right on. Jamal Cain's a pro. And we've played 11 times against the best teams, and he's normally the best player on the floor. I'm not, I don't know if he was tonight or not. He was damn close, though. And he's a pro. And in our league, a pro's going to do really well. And I expect our team will do really well, too. When you have a point guard like we have and a dynamic player like him and Micah Parrish and Trey Thompson, I have four players that can play anywhere in the country on any team. I think that will bode well in the horizon. Greg, did you know that the uh, microphone was piped throughout the entire arena at halftime? And you kind of lost it a little bit. What? Did you know that the microphone at your halftime interview was piped throughout the entire arena? What I said to my players in no, the locker on court. On the court. court. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that was worse, but it got pretty heated in the, yeah, the halftime interview. I did? Just with me. It's okay. Was I mean to you? No. God, no. It was pretty par for the course, really. I was ready. After no you different the, than normal. Yeah, after you took I, the technical, I, I was ready for it. I don't give a shit about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they got to know who I am, right? I mean, I'm fine here. <laughs> well, you want me to go up there and say, oh, it's all good. They got nine offensive rebounds and 17 points off it. But you know what? We're okay. <laughs> no, I didn't, Tony. You just scared the hell out of me. Ooh. Let's go to Tris. So this is a completely different Tom Izzo team. And, um, and I talked to him before the game a little bit about it. You know, he's, he really likes his team. He's really enjoying it. And I think part of it is, you know, they weren't in the top 25 in the preseason. Things didn't go that well last year. He's got something, you know, something to prove. You know, people maybe question a couple of things. And guys like me that have been around, we don't like it when you know, I mean, when you're around as long as we're around, you, you, there's ebbs and flows. I mean, you're not you're not always going to be the number one team in the country, number one seed. And I think he, in his mind, he's he knows what he has. And those two point guards make all the difference in the world. There's no question about it. Um, and if they're only going to turn it over ten times, ooh, they're really going to be good.
They're so much better today than they were when they opened with Kansas. And Bingham, I know we're a rising league team, but that stuff they did, and his, he's growing and, and getting, I mean, he, you can just see, I've known that kid for a long time, and he's just, he's like, do you remember the movie One Full Over Cougar's Nest? The Chief? Yeah. You know, remember that? And he would, finally made a basket, and the next time he was down, that's what he's doing. He's just growing with every possession, and he's good. he's a dominant, dominant player at, against anybody. So he's got a really good team, and he knows it. Anything else for Coach? Merry Christmas. Thank you for joining us. Yep, thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas, Coach. Thanks, everyone. Um, uh, I give credit to Michigan State. You know, uh, they prepared well. Um, they know we had great offensive guys. Um, and, you know, I take my hat off to them. I give them credit. You know, they came prepared and they played the way they wanted to play. Danielle? Uh, I think both of you can answer this, but Coach, can't be just said he thinks you learned a lot from tonight's game. Can you comment on that and what you can take away into next week's return to the Horizon League? Um, I think we can take away that we need a rebound. Can't give up so many offense rebounds. Um, it's going to happen. It's a part of the game, but um, we got to do our best of our jobs and not let it happen. Um, and just build off of that. Uh, yeah, just to, you know, piggyback off what he said, um, we got to rebound. Uh, you know, they long, they athletic, so, you know, we had to, you know, get, you know, get grimy. You know, had to put bodies on bodies, um, and that's something we didn't do in the first half, and that's what led, you know, to them being up, you know, double digits. So, you know, that's something we're going to go back, you know, practice on, you know, overemphasize, you know, from now on. That's going to help us in league play. Do either of you guys want to talk about just the atmosphere that was, was here tonight? I mean, it was a good open crowd as well, but, I mean, obviously Michigan State shot off got pretty loud at times. What, what was that like for you guys on the floor? Um, I think the atmosphere was great. Um, I've never played in front of fans like that. Um, from last year, no fans to come into this, and it was so packed. And Jamal was shooting the tech free throws, and it was just so loud. And I'm just like, wow, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, you know, pretty used to, you know, playing in front of all those, you know, fans. But, uh, you know, Michigan State had a great atmosphere. I feel like uh, we also had a great atmosphere. Um, you know, it was great to, you know, not having fans last year and just playing one of the best teams in the country and having this sold out and, you know, just playing for the fans and for ourselves and for our coaches. Yeah, that, the last three minutes of the first half, um, you guys talk about that and what happened there. You guys got with that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, we were coming out in transition, and uh, I turned the ball over. And I think they just took off from there, and they got a um, couple good look threes and a couple offensive rebounds. Coach screwed you. No. <laughs> no, it was, it was, Coach told me to push the ball, and um, personally, I feel like I got fouled. Um, but it is what it is, move on. And like Coach told me, I can't pick my dribble up so early. Um, take one or two more dribbles, and just try to um, get to the basket, and if they collapse on me, try to find my teammates. So I got to learn off of that, and like Coach always tells me, I got to play off of two feet. Um, and that's something that is really hard for me because I'm going downhill so fast, it's hard for me to stop, but uh, you know, I got to work on that. Um, yeah, I'd say as well, like, uh, Michigan State got good guards. You know, they quick, strong, um, so I, we knew it was going to be a challenge, uh, and, you know, that showed here tonight, and that's something, again, that we're going to have to, you know, you know, practice on trying to keep the ball from going on the outside and trying to force some more middle. So that's something, again, that we're going to have to, you know, pick up on. Do you think the break helped you guys or hurt you guys, the long break? Which break? Between what do? Oh, you guys had a long break between games. Oh, um, I don't believe it hurt us. And um, I would say it helped us. It helped us prepare. Um, I started catching cramps. I think that's probably from sitting so long and just playing the atmosphere like that. But I don't think it hurt us. You know, it gave us plenty of time to prepare, plenty of time to work on stuff that we need to work on. Um, yeah. Oh, but then I, you know, we talked about it before. I think it really helped us for our conference because we are going to go into conference. And now, now we get four days completely off. We're going into conference physically in really good shape. Where you know, the grind of the long season, you start to get beat up. And that those dog days in January and February, we shouldn't have those this year because of these two breaks. And 
if it goes that way and I like it, I'm going to do this every year. It, it was uh, a mistake to happen this year. It was a circumstances. But if it can, if, if we get through it like this, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I was afraid we wouldn't shoot well. And, and we had a couple guys not shoot well, but, you know, the core guys made shots tonight. So I, I like it. Got one more for the players. Uh, Coach was talking about the five-second um, hoops at MSU was getting just the frantic pace. Well, what's that do for you guys as, as a defense trying to set up and MSU just you know pushing it down the throat like that? Can you repeat that, please? Oh, this is the, the five-second buckets they were getting. Like, you were oh, saying like oh, oh, quick, oh, you know, ready, the, preparing for them to score in the first five seconds. And yeah, uh, I think we did a pretty good job. Um, Micah and Jamal did a really great job of slowing our point guard down. He's a really good point guard. He pushes the ball really well. Uh, we prepared for that, and I think that's going to help us in the long run um, in league play because I don't think there's going to be a team who are as fast as those guys, who play as fast as those guys. So, um, And it's really hard to score against our defense when we're set, so I think that's going to help us in the long run. Anything else for the player? Okay. Thanks, guys. You can go back to locker room. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys.